Howdy, I'm Bill Woody. Welcome to Pre-Algebra. Let's get something straight right from the beginning here. If you're taking this class, you've got a long way to go to get that degree. This class and three more. Okay, but you know what? I'm here to tell you, you can do it. You know how I know that? Thousands of people have gone that same path of math before you even thought about it. Okay? I'm going to ask you to watch the show every week. Don't miss any. And do your homework. And if I talk too fast, don't forget you can always go to the home page to replay what we've done here on, on the TV program. That home page is at www.montgomerycollege.edu up slash, this is easy to remember, up slash pre-algebra. Okay? Well, let's get to it. Now, where should we begin? It all makes sense to start at the beginning. I think so. We don't want to assume anything. So let's talk about basic numbers and digits, okay? What do we already know? Well, there's a ones digit. That keeps how many ones we have in a number. Then the tens and the hundreds. This is easy, isn't it? Thousands after that. The comma really doesn't matter, does it? It's just to make it easy to read. Then tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands. Now what comes after that? I don't know. I've never made anything close to that. Ah, millions, and what would be after that? Ten millions, and that's big enough for us to think about. Okay, so those are the digits. What are we going to do with these babies? Well, let's talk about rounding, okay, and how useful that is. Allow me to demonstrate. If we wanted to round, for instance, the number 568, and in this case, we want to round it to the nearest 10, okay, the closest 10. That's the 10. You needed to know your digits. Well, what's our options here? Hmm. It's either going to end up being 560, that's the 110, if you would, or 570. Well, how are we going to do this? Which is it closer to? We're going to use the next digit to judge. The next digit after the tens Perhaps I could be of some assistance. would be the ones in this case. Okay, well, let's see. 8 is more than halfway up. So in this case, are we going to use this one? No! No, we're going to use the larger one, 570. You see how we used the next digit that time? Easy. Let's do another one. Let's round this number to the nearest thousand. Well, we've got to place our thousand digit. Where is that bad boy? Okay, that's a, now all the numbers after that are going to end up being zero. Okay, so the question is, hmm. is it 267,000 or the next one up? That's somewhere in the middle. Okay, we're certainly not going to go down, you understand. Okay, because that's a whole thousand away. We're kind of in the middle here. We want to go either stay at the same thousand or go up. We'll always do that. Well, how are we going to do that? What's going to help us judge? The next digit's going to help us judge. What is that digit? The hundreds, the three. Okay, well, that's, is that halfway? That's less than halfway. So we're not going to go up. You're way off. I say you're way off this time. And we're going to just stay right where we're at, at 267,000. So that'll be the closest thousand in this case. Note that all the things after the thousand are zeros. Okay? Okay, you got to do another one. I'm going to see what's going on. Okay? In this case, we're going to round the same number, this time to the nearest hundred. There's your hundred. It's either going to be 300 or 400. We never go down. We always stay the same or go up. I'm going to use the next digit. Perhaps I could be of some assistance. The six is more than halfway, but we're not using that one. We're going to go up this time. So rounded to the nearest hundred is 268,400. Hmm. Seems pretty easy. Could anything wrong go here? Well, how about a little fire, Scarecrow? Let's see. Can I screw this one up? This one, what do they want me to round it to? The nearest 10. It would seem easy. There's the 10. Hmm. What are we going to do? 560 or 565? Well, as usual, we're going to use the next digit. Houston, we have a problem. Uh oh. When you think about the 5, many people would say, oh, that's right in the middle. Okay? That's not the way we're going to do this. Okay? What is the next digit? The possible next digits are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. 
five, six, seven, eight, or nine. So actually, five's in the second group. It's closer to the larger. So if we have a five, we're going to go up. Okay, so remember that. If we have a five, we're going to go up in our rounding. So in this case, go! we're going to go up, and the answer rounded to the nearest 10 is 570. Okay? What else we got? Oh, well, let's do a couple. Why would we want to do this? If we round each number to the closest hundred, well, in a problem, we haven't even shown you how to add yet. I want to know when I get an answer that at least my answer is close. Okay, because that's hard to add. Okay? Well, let's see. 294 in this case rounds to about 300. Now, why did I pick to the hundreds? Because that's the largest digit in that one. Okay? 613 is going to round to 600. And 1671 is going to round to 1700. It goes up in that case. Well, now they're easy to add. So my answer should be about 2600 when I do the addition, which actually is 2578. So I'm pretty close there. Missed it by that much. That's a good sign. I must have probably got the answer right. Okay. When, is, when does this come into play? Well, when you're rounding distances or things in, in real life, for instance, I know I want to go between these cities. It, it, as long as I'm close, uh, I'm going to be okay. I want to round the distances here. How would I do that just to get an estimate of how far it is on the map here? Well, let's see. 94 is about, and 327, 379 is about, 281 is about, well, let's figure it out. 94 would round to 100, right? 379 would round to 400. It's closer to that, right? We're just trying to get it close. And 281 would round to 300. Now it's easy. Just add them up. So the answer is about 900. It's important to know your distances if you don't want to be walking. Okay? So that's one, one other reason why we might do this. Let's look at a couple more. Did you ever get, you want to figure out at least about what your grade is? Well, Joe's finishing up the semester with 59, 74, 89, and 85. I wonder what the sum, the total scores of, of, that he would have about. Okay, well, if we wanted to add them all up, it would be a pain. Let's approximate. 59 is about 60. 74, and we go down in that case, about 70. 89 is right close to 90. And 85, remember with the 5, we go up, is the 90. Okay? It's a little easier to add in this case. So in this case, they round to about, the sum is 310. One more. This happened to me all the time. What about when you're trying to figure out how much to bring on that big date? Well, <laughs> it's a big date. You might have to bring a corsage. No! Got to rent a limo for honey. She likes that. No! Dinner for two. I don't know why I have to pay for her, but that's the no! deal. And then the two movie tickets. Let's see. How much is this big date going to cost me? It's pretty important. Well, where am I going to get the corsage? It's Safeway, of course. Nice and cheap. The limo? Well, we'll use my car, and I'll get the gas, from under the, gas change from under the seat. Okay, that's about how much I'm going to spend there. Dinner for two? Well, let's see, two Big Macs. Uh, that's going to be about $11.95. And movie tickets? Well, I can't escape that. Nothing I can do about that. That's going to, boy, movies are killing me nowadays. Now, I want to know about how much to bring. It's too hard to add these up. Okay, $8.43 is about $8. $3.68, I'm going to go up in that case to $4. $11.95, closer to $12. And 1550, remember with the five, you go up. Okay? Now it's easy to estimate. I better bring. Well, let me add them up. Lighten up, Francis. I got a carry there. I hate carrying. Relax. I'm going to bring about $40. Maybe bring a couple more bucks just in case. Okay? And what's this carrying thing anyway? He didn't say anything about that. Let's look at that. Okay? But anyway, we're going to have a happy day because we're going to have enough money. If we didn't, Holy we'd be in deep doo-doo.
Okay, let's talk about the different operations we can do with plain old whole numbers, okay? Remember, remember, let's remember digits first, because they're going to be a factor. The ones, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, what comes after that? Ten thousands, hundred thousands, what comes after that? Millions and ten millions, okay? This is going to be a factor. Let's add some whole numbers. How do you do these bad boys? Well, remember, if we're going to add them, we don't want to add, we want to, you know, match apples and oranges, okay? We want apples to apples, oranges to oranges. So we would add, for instance, ones to ones. So we're going to line them up. Add the ones. Line up all the ones. That's easy. Line up all the tens. Tens to tens. Two to five. Okay, that adds up. We're just lining these up, hundreds to hundreds. Well, now, wait a minute. Eight and four add up to 12, and I can only put one number there. So I'll put the two there. Wait a minute. And bring the one to the next digit, which is thousands. Okay, and add all three of them up in this case. That's called carrying. And I get the answer. Not so bad, is it? Thank you, sir. I have a number. Well, if you need... A little bit more practice on this, just in case. Let's take a look at this carrying, because it is a little bit difficult. Okay. Remember, we line up the digits. 763 and 162. It's easy to line them up, because they have the same number of digits. 3 and 2 make 5. 6 and 6 make 12. So we put the 2 of the 12 and carry that 1. OK, there it is. And then add all of them and get a 9. Okay, let's look at a different one here. How is it going to be different? Well, hmm. this one has a different number of digits. Okay, we're still going to line them up. Okay, it's just not as easy. <laughs> let's line the 4 of 54 up with the 8 of 698. Why do we line it up that way? Because the 1s line up with the 1s, etc. 10s with the 10s, etc. Okay, now 4 and 8 make 12. So we'll put the two there. Carry the one. Okay, and now we'll have a one, a five, and a nine. That adds up to fifteen. Uh -oh, we got to do it again. Let's put the five of fifteen in, and now what am I gonna do? Well, you carry the one. You can carry twice. Okay, and now the one and the six. That's not so bad. Excellent. You're looking good. Make a seven fifty-two. So that's about as hard as it'll get for carry. Okay. Yes, you're in deep do now. Now let's go the other way. Let's try borrowing and subtraction. Let's take a look at this one. Okay, let's subtract these babies. We're still going to line them up. 763 and 162. Let's see, this one's not so bad. 3 minus 2. 6 minus 6. Hey, zero's a number. you got you got to do the subtraction. If you get zero, you put zero. 7 minus 1 is 6. It's not so bad, okay? Once again, let's see what happens with the worst thing that can happen, if you would. Okay, how about this problem? Line them up. Line up the ones and the tens, etc. Now, zero minus eight. Can't do it. Now what am I gonna do? Well, we're gonna borrow. We're gonna borrow from that four, one of them, only one. Of course, he'll become a three. Okay, and if we borrow one of the tens, that zero, becomes a full poopsie 10. Okay, now you got enough to subtract. 10 minus 8 is 2. Okay, now you can just go 3 minus 2 is the 1, and 6 minus, I don't see anything there, so 6 minus nothing is 6. I'm such a genius. Of course, it's not bad, is it? That's the idea of borrowing from the next digit. You're always going to bring a 10 over and add to what you already have. Okay? Now we're getting into the tough stuff here, okay? You've got to ask why if you have any trouble with this stuff, okay? Don't just memorize how we do it because these same problems, people say, well, why can't I just do it on the calculator? I don't, you know, I don't need to know how to do this. We're going to be using the same principles in multiplication and in division when we get to doing it with letters, okay? So you really have to understand why we do this. Please don't just memorize. Don't be afraid to ask questions or go to the home page or email me if you don't understand these. Okay, let's take a look at multiplication. You know, when we talk about multiplication, 
there's going to be some properties that I'm sorry, you're going to have to know. You're just going to have to know them, okay? They don't seem important now, but you are going to have to know them. Son, this is for your own good. They're going to come into play all, all the way through calculus. They're going to come into play. The multiplication property of zero we'll look at. The property of one may seem obvious, but we have to know them. The commutative property, you're going to have to know that. As opposed to the associative property, you don't know any of these, okay? And the distributive property, okay? Well, let's take a look at all five of these. You will have to know what they are and, and be able to tell one from the other, okay? Let's start off with the multiplication property of zero. Jolly good. Well, let me just, <laughs> that sounds fancy. Let's do it in English. The multiplication property of zero is that anything, when you multiply it times zero, is going to result in zero. Now, that sounds obvious, but you'll have to, that'll have to become a back, like the back of your hand. Five times zero, of course, is zero. X times zero, you get a little harder, still zero. Anything times zero, remember? Hugupa wabwa chinga times zero equals zero. I don't care what it is. Anything times zero equals zero. Okay, that's the property. Next one, the multiplication property of one. Hmm, that's a little bit different. I say, old chap. What do you mean, Amanda? What's it in English? Anything times one equals itself. For instance, five times one equals five. Of course, itself. X times one equals X itself. Hoodly do times one equals hoodly do. So anything times one equals itself. Next one. Commuting, commutative. That sounds like moving, like my car. And it is. Jolly good. In English, the commutative property means that you can switch, commute, or move, whatever, same thing, the order of the, uh, the terms or, or, the, or the, the factors, the things that are getting multiplied. You can move them and not change the answer. For instance, 5 times 7 may seem simple, is going to give you the same answer as 7 times 5. See how we moved them? We commuted the order, but we got the same answer, of course, 35. 2 times 10 times 3 is going to be the same as 10 times 2 times 3. What got switched that time, the 10 and the 2? Just because the 3 didn't move, it's still the commutative property in, in effect here. Well. You see how the 10 and the 2 switched? That's the commutative property. So this switching, you know, you think oh, that would work anytime. Well, let's consider. It wouldn't work for other uh, operations. For instance, subtraction. The 7 minus 5, which is 2, is that the same as 5 minus 7? No, it isn't. So the commutative property doesn't work for subtraction. It's not as, as elementary as you might seem. Uh, look at the next one. 10 divided by 5. Well, that's 2, I know. Is that the same as 5 divided by 10? No! No, it isn't. So the commutative property you're going to find actually only works for multiplication and addition. Okay? We'll come back to that. What, got another property for me? The next one is the associative property. And this is tough. People always mix this up with the commutative. Remember, the commutative is moving. Associative is associating. Hmm. In English, and this is only going to happen when we have more than two factors, three or four or five, more than two. The point is, we're not changing the order, but we're going to do them in any order that we choose. We can associate, because you, your brain can only do two things at once, can only combine two things at once. I give you three, you go, sorry, I'll let me get the two, and then I'll take the answer and multiply it times the third one, okay? So you really can only do two. The associative property is telling you it doesn't matter which two you do first, okay? Let's take a look at an example. Two times 10 times three, in this case, the parentheses are telling me to multiply the two and the 10 first, is gonna give me the same answer as two times 10 times three, where in this case, I'm doing the 10 and the three. I'm associating different ones on either side. Note that 
I haven't switched the order. It's still 2, 10, 3, 2, 10, 3. So it's not commutative here. It's associative. What, what, what? Yep. It doesn't matter which two you associate first. That's the associative property. Of course, in this case, we'd get 20 times 3, and we get 2 times 30. They're both going to give me 60, so I'm hunky-dunky. Now, in this case, in subtraction, subtraction doesn't work associatively. 10 minus 7 minus 2, I do the 10 and the 7 first, doesn't equal 10 minus 7 minus 2, where I do the 7 and the 2 first, does it? Because in the first, on the left side, the 10 minus 7, 3, 3 minus 2, where I get 1. On the right side, 10 minus 5, I would get a 5. No! They do, it doesn't work for subtraction. Associative property only works for multiplication and addition. Okay, we'll come back. But you get the idea. We didn't switch the order like in commutative, commutative property. We switched, basically, we switched the parentheses, or which ones we did first, which two we did first. Okay? Got one more property, the distributive property. Now, this one's both multiplication and addition. It's called the distributive property of multiplication over addition. And we're going to be looking at this a lot uh, in the future, in algebra and all kinds of stuff. Jolly good. You see, this is the one exception to the order of operations. You may remember that the order of operations has you do what's in parentheses first. Okay, well, you say you always do that. This is the only exception to that. Okay, you say, well, we never make an exception to the order of operations. I'll give you an example. Okay, in this problem, uh, you could do what's in parentheses first, 3 plus 4, and, and get a 7, and then multiply by 2. Or we can distribute the 2 to the 3 and distribute it to the 4. See so how we're going multiplication over addition and get the same answer. We could distribute the 10 in this case. Not doing what's in parentheses first, the 5 and the 6. Distribute the 10 to the 5 and distribute it to the 6. And you know what? We're going to get the same answer. You say, well, that's stupid. Why would I do that? Well, it's when you can't do what's in parentheses first that's going to be very useful. Who cares? I'm promising you. I can do that, but I don't want to. Yeah, you can't do what's in parentheses. This case, what's x plus 5? Can't do it. So in this case, we could distribute the 10 to the x and distribute it to the 5. Hey, this is great, man. You got yourself an answer, Buford. How do you like that? Okay? So those are your properties. They're pretty, pretty basic, but you have to recognize and know the name of them. Okay? Here is today's final Jeopardy answer. See if you can tell the difference between... Well, a lot of people have trouble between associative and commutative, and, and vice versa. Pay attention, son. This is for your own good. This is the statement. 7 times 3 times 5 is 3 times 7 times 5. What's the reason? Commutative or associative? What changed? Well, it's commutative. You know why? Because the 3 and the 7 switched order. Okay? They commuted. What about this one? What's the reason here? I see parentheses. Pay attention, son. This is for your own good. Uh, this one's going to be associative. The, the order didn't change. It's still 2, 4, 5. Oh, yes, it did change. Son of a gun. Even though the parentheses are trying to throw a trick at you. Okay? The 4 and the 5 did change to 5 and 4. So once again, <laughs> it's commutative. Almost got me. Now this one, the first thing I'm going to check is I'm not going to let me trick myself again. Did the order change? 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 5. The order didn't change. What changed is where the parentheses are. Which two I'm associating first. I smell associative property. Okay, see how they could be, you could uh, confuse these two, couldn't you? In this case, I'm associating the 4 and the 5, and the next one I'm associating the 2 and the 4. So that's the reason it's the associative property. The reason it's not the commutative property is I haven't changed the order. Okay? Aha! That's a tough one, huh? Any of this getting through to you, son? I hope so, because you're going to be using this in algebra and on calculus and all kinds of stuff. Okay? Remember these properties. Now let's get to the tough stuff. Actually multiplying. Okay? On paper. Bring it all. We can do it, baby. Let's multiply 2 times 89. How do you actually go through this? Well, we're going to multiply the 2 times the 9. That'll give me 18. 
Now what do I do? Bring down the 8 and carry the 1 of the 18, because it's, it's really, that 1 is really stands for a 10. Okay, carry the 1, put it above the other 10s. Now we'll multiply 2 times 8, get 16. Don't forget the 1 you carried. It gives me a 17, and I put the 17 in there, and that's my answer. Not so bad. What if I have to do a couple numbers for the multiplication? I'll add the results. Let's take a look at a little more difficult. Once again, 2 times the 9, oops, a different problem. 3 times the 9 is 27. Okay, we're going to do the 3 first. 3 times 9, 27. Okay. <coughs> I'll put the 7 and carry the 2. Okay, now we've got to do 3 times the 8. What do we get? A 24. Don't forget your 2 that you carried. And we get a 26. Okay, so we'll put that there. Now we haven't done the 4 yet, have we? We've only done the 3. So now it's time to do the 4, and we'll put the answer lining up the appropriate things underneath the 267. But remember, that 4 isn't really a 4. It's a 4T. Okay? So we're going to line up our first answer, not with the 7, but with the 6 in the tens digit, because we are really multiplying by four tens here. Okay? Start off with four times the nine, we get 36. Put the six and carry the three. It's the same deal, we're just lining up different things. The four times the eight is gonna give me what? That'll give me a 32, and then remember the three that you carried Give you 35, and we'll place the 35 there. Now we've got, this is why it's called partial products, because i got a product of 267 and a product of 356, and we'll add those. Okay, add them up, line them up right. A 7 and nothing is 7. 6 and 6 is 12. Carry. 101. Uh -oh. Yeah, we can do that. So the 1, the 2, and the 5 gives me the 8, and 3 doesn't get added to anything. And that's how you do it, okay? We won't get too much harder than that, but that's the idea. Well, what do we got going here? One of the things you're going to use multiplication for is area, okay? A very useful application. Area. Remember what area is. Area is actually how many squares are in a figure. Now, this one's easy. I can just count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. There's 15 squares. So the area of this, that's what it means, how many square units there are. Okay? That's because I counted. Note, though, that this one has a width, if you would, of 3 feet and a length of 5 feet. So there could, we could come up with a shortcut for area, at least for these rectangles. Okay? You say, well, I don't need a shortcut. Well, you might. Ooh, I'm dying! Yeah, you might want it in this case, rather than counting and be there all day. Knowing, I'm t if I told you that it was nine inches tall, and the other one was, let's see, seven inches, rather than going through all the count, remember the formula that we derived here? Length times width, or nine times seven. Go! Too many to count. Hello! Hello! Hello. The area of a rectangle is length times width. 9 times 7, in this case, is 63 squares, or we're going to say 63 square inches. Very useful application of multiplication. Okay, and we'll be seeing that uh, on tests. Okay. Okay. Getting a little bit harder here. I'm going to start talking about doing the, uh, multiplication backwards, which is division. Okay. Division has its own properties as well, and they're tough. So don't be afraid to ask why. Don't be afraid to email me or look at the home page. Let's take a look. Well, first of all, what are we talking about with division? Here's a typical division problem. 60 divided by 2 equals 30. Well, we have a name for each of these things. The thing you start off with, the thing that gets divided, is called the dividend. The guy that does the dividing is the divider, or divisor, we say. And the answer to a division problem 
is called the quotient. Now we're going to be using these words, so I expect you to know them. And it may be written different ways. Here's a division problem, where 50 is the dividend, the thing that gets divided, 10 is the divisor, and what did we say the answer was? The quotient. Any other times? Another way to write it, of course, is the obvious 42 divided by 7 equals 6, where, once again, the thing you started off with, the dividend, the thing that does the dividing, the divisor, and the answer, the quotient. Okay? Now, so I'm going to tell you something, something that may seem obvious, but there's a reason for division. Okay? And you need to understand why, you know, in this whole course. You really want to understand why. Take a look at this division problem, the 24 divided by 6. The reason that 24 divided by 6 is 4, you know why? It's because we can go backwards, we can check it. 4 times 6 equals 24. That's the reason that we can divide. The reason that Oogie Poo divided by 3 equals 2 must be that 2 times 3 must equal Oogie Poo. It must be, or this isn't going to be true. Just remember, it seems obvious, but that's the purpose of division, and we're going to be checking your division problems with the inverse multiplication, okay? Now we got some properties to look at in division this time. Pay attention, son. This is for your own good. You know, there's not as many in division. The division property of 1, we're going to take a look at. And there's two division properties of 0. 0 is a real troublemaker with division, you're going to see. So we're going to take a look at those three. Let's start off with the division property of 1. This one I don't think I you're going to have too much trouble shot. with. In English, anything, anything divided by 1 comes out to itself. 5 divided by 1 is 5. It's easy. x divided by 1 is x. You don't even know what x is, but you know x divided by 1 is x. Hoodly do divided by 1 is hoodly do. So remember the division property of 1. Anything divided by 1 is itself. And you know that may seem simple and stupid and we're never going to use it. We're going to use it like a mug all throughout this semester, the division property of 1. Okay, there's two division properties of 0. Let's look at the first one. In English, 0 divided by anything results in 0. 0 divided by 5 is nothing. 0 divided by 2, no matter how you write it, you're still going to get 0. If you start with 0 and you divide, you're going to get 0. 0 divided by hee hee, still going to be 0. Okay, so the first division property of 0, not so bad, is that anything divided by, uh, I mean 0 divided by anything equals 0. And, and, and let's see why, okay? Let's take a look at, let's work backwards and check these answers. 0 divided by 5 is 0 because 0 times 5 is 0. 0 divided by 2 is 0 because if you work backwards, 0 times 2 results in 0. 0 divided by hee hee must be 0 because 0 times hee hee equals 0. Okay? So if you just check yourself, you really don't have to remember this property. The next one's tough, though. Yeah, it's tough, okay? It's kind of, well, let's take a look. The second division property Jolly is 0. Good. Anything divided by 0. Remember the first one we did 0 divided by anything. This is anything divided by 0 is ugh, undefined. We don't even know what it is. How could that be? Hmm. Let's take a look. 24 divided by 6 is 4. Why is that? Remember? Because 4 times 6 is 24. Okay, well let's get back to our 0. 24 divided by 0. What are the possible answers for that? Could it be 24? Wait a minute. Can't be. Because 24 times 0, we can't go backwards and say 24 times 0 is 24. So that's not an answer. You say, well, I know what it is. No way. How about 0? Well, You're despicable. it's not 0 either, Buford, because 0 times 0 doesn't get, back, get you back to 24 either. 
No way. In fact, hmm. you can't think of anything times zero that equals 24. Consequently, anything, if you understand, you can't check it. So anything divided by zero, we just say there's no answer. It's just undefined. We don't have an answer. Okay? Get used to that. That's tough. Okay? This is what everybody has trouble with is long division. And we're going to be using this in the future, so you'll need to know it and the why. Let's go through the rigmarole of, of, of a problem and see all the steps that we do and try to generalize here. Well, let's see. We want to go 3 into 2,541. We're going to get it. Let's do 3 into 2 goes... Hmm. 3 into 2 goes nuts. <laughs> okay, so I'm not going to... Let's, let's take it out further. How about... I don't really need to write the zero. How about 3 into 25? We'll go to the next digit because we didn't get anything for the 2. Well, that one goes in. 3 does go into 25 how many times? 8 times. So I'll put the answer 8. I'm really writing 800 there. Do you see where I put the 8 right over the 500? Okay, but I'm, I'm getting an estimate. Well, this estimate, let's see how close I am. Got to multiply. 8 times 3. That gives me 24. I'm close. Let's see how much I missed it by. Well, I would subtract to find out how much I missed it by. I missed it by 1. Okay. So my first guess was 8, really 800, because of where the digit is. Okay, now I'm going to make another guess, a more refined guess. I'm going to bring down the next number and make another guess. Okay, I've taken care of the 8. 3 into 14, hmm. it does go in four times. So let me place my four and check how close I am. Four times three is 12. How much am I off by? Well, I subtract. I'm off by two. Now, I'm not exact yet, okay? But once again, now my guess is not 800, but 840. Note where the four is, okay? Well, let's bring down the next digit and make another guess. 3 into 21. Hmm. It does go in, and you like this. Goes in seven times. Okay? Well, let's multiply and see how close we are. Ah. See what we're off by. We're not off by anything. So we got it. Okay, bring down the next digit. There isn't a next digit, so we're done. So our answer here, 847. And that's what we're going to do to do long division. It was long, wasn't it? Well, let's see if we can generalize the steps that we did there. Okay? Basically, we went through a sequence of three steps. Hmm. We estimated or made a guess of an answer. Remember what an answer is, a quotient. Then we multiplied. And we subtracted to see what we were off by. And then we brought down the next digit. Okay, then what did we do? Went back and went through the whole process all over again. Hmm. We re-estimated, we re-multiplied, and we re-subtracted. And then we brought down the next digit, and we kept going through that process until there wasn't a next digit. Get the idea? Well, let's do another one, okay? Take a look. <coughs> do that again. This one's tough. Let's take 23 into 1. I'll go one digit at a time. Well, it doesn't go in. Okay? Goes in nuns. You can put a zero there, but you don't need to. How about 23 into 13? Hmm. Uh, doesn't go in either. You can put a zero there, but you don't need to. We're working our way over there. I mean, you do that mentally, probably. Okay? How about 23 into 135? And this one goes in. Hmm. Okay? My guess is it goes in five times. How do I know whether I'm close or how much I'm off by? Remember the next step. Multiply. 5 times 23, and we went over multiplication, so I'm going to assume you can do that, is 115. Now, how much am I off by? How am I going to find out? What am I going to do? I'm going to subtract. I'm going to get 20 in this case, okay? So I'm off by 20. My real guesstimate here is not 5, but 50, okay? Because 5 is in the 10 spot. Well. Let's bring down the next digit. What is the next digit? The 8. Okay, and let's make another guess. 23 into 208. Hmm. 
My guess is nine times. Now you're allowed to make a mistake, but I'm not, just for brevity here, I'm going to hit it pretty close. Goes in nine times. I'm going to multiply to check to see how close. Ah, 207. Subtract. I'm off by one. Okay, well, I know there isn't the next digit. So you know what I'm going to do? Bring down the next digit. I'm going to say I'm done, because as I told you, that's when you're done, when you bring down the next digit. So my answer here is 59 with a remainder of 1. At least at this point, that's what we're going to do. Okay? That's a tough one, huh? How we, what's a, well, let me give you one uh, application that I know you'll want to use for division, and that's averages. Okay? You could use, for instance, grade averages or whatever. Okay? The average of a list of numbers or values is the sum of their values, you add them up, and then divide by the total number of values in the list. Okay? Let's look at an example. Here's a person that uh, has the scores of 93, 86, 71, and 82 on their four tests so far, and wants to know their average. Well, we're going to add them up. Okay? Well, let's see. Add up the first digits there, 3, 5, 2, and 2. That adds up to 12. Put the 2, carry the 1, right? I mean, we know how to add. We did that. Okay. Then add these all up, and that adds up to 33. So I got a total of 332. But that's, not, that's the total. That's the sum. That's not the average. What am I going to divide by here? What's the total number of values here? Well, how many are there? <laughs> There's 4. Let's divide 332 by 4 and get the average. Hmm. 4 into 3 goes nuns. Hmm. 4 into 33 goes 8 times. Remember, we check it with multiplication. 8 times 4, 32. Subtract what we're off by. <laughs> off by 1. Now, let's re-guess. Bring down the next digit, the 2. 4 into 12. Hmm. Goes in 3 times. Let's multiply. 3 times 4, 12. Subtract to see what we're off by. And we ain't off by nothing. Excuse my English. So my average in this case is an 83. Okay? It's nice to be able to check your averages. You never know what the teacher will give you. Thank you, sir. May I have another? Let me just do one more example, okay? Just so you're not memorizing, so you get the idea of averages. Remember what averages are. We're going to add them up and divide by the total number. Now this fellow, remember when you bought your textbooks? Ooh, I hope you brought a check or a credit card. This fellow spent $39, $65, $48, $28, and $45 on all the textbooks. Okay, we want to find the average cost. So we'll add them up. Okay, let's add them up. Add up the first line there. That adds up to 35. Well, what do we do? We put the 5 and carry the 3. And we add up the 10s and we get 22, including the 3. So the sum is 225. Now, what are we going to divide by this time? You don't always divide by 4. Okay, and this time, how many do we have? We have 5 of them. So we're going to divide by 5. 225 divided by 5. Hmm. Let's see. Into 2. 5 goes nuts. Okay, you don't have to write the 0. In fact, I'll erase it. Hmm. How about into 22? Yep, it goes in 4 times. 4 times 5, 20. Subtract. Get a 2. Now remember the sequence here. We bring, bring down the next digit, which in this case is a 5. Okay, now, re-guess. 5 into 25. Hmm. Ooh, and goes in real nice. 5 times 5, 25. How much am I off by? The usual, none. Great Holy crap, you're telling me the average textbook is $45? Well, it is in this case. Ouch. Anyway, that's the deal. It's time to review. Here we go, baby. Now, what did we cover again? Well, we covered adding, where we line everything up. Line up the digits. 3, 2 is 5. 
Six and six is 12. Carry. Lighten up, Francis. And then add everything you got there. Oakley doakley do. Hmm. And even if the di uh, number of digits is different, as in this case, you got 54 and 698, <laughs> you still line up the ones with the ones and the tens with the tens, etc. Four and eight make 12. Put the two for the ones, because this is the ones column, and carry that one from the 12 that is a 10. Um, and we carried it, and we got the 15. And then we carry another one, which will go with the six and get the seven. Remember we carried the one. Okay? Excellent. Yoink. Remember subtraction. Uh, Same deal, we still line up the digits. 763 and 162 and just subtract. Remember that you have to put a zero here because a zero is a number. You can win the lottery on zero, you know. Six minus six is zero. Seven minus one is six. Not too bad. Does it get any worse than this? Yeah, what about carrying? Line these babies up, the ones with the ones, the tens with the tens, etc. Now, in this case, 0 minus 8, we had to pull one from the 4. Now, what am I going to do? That made the 4 a 3, and we brought, we brought what? We brought the 10 and added it to what we already had, a 0. That left me with a 10. Well, now I can subtract like you've never seen. 10 minus 8, it's a 2. 3 minus the 2 is a 1, and 6 minus nothing is 6. So there's your idea, you may remember, of borrowing. Such a genius. We covered rounding. Here's one where we rounded to the nearest 1,000. Looking at the 1,000, oh, we, you know, everything after that is going to be zeros. So hmm. we're either going to be... Uh, 267,000, note all zeros after that, or go up, one, 268,000. How are we going to decide? We're going to use the next digit, which in this case is the hundreds. Now that digit is uh, not all the way to the middle, okay? It's, it's closer to the, uh, to the seven. You're way off. I say you're so way we're going to use 267,000 in that case. Anything else about rounding we need to remember? Oh, yeah. Here's one where I wanted to round to the nearest 10. That means everything after that, after that, will be a zero. Hmm. So it's either going to be 760 or 770. What am I going to use to decide? The next digit. Houston, we have a problem. But Remember, the next digit you were thinking is right in the middle. Well, for our purposes, we're going to say that 5 isn't right in the middle. 5 is one of the five big ones as far as digits concerned. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 are the first five. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 are the next five. So we're going to go up in this case. Okay, so our answer, not 760, no! is 770. Okay, remember that about rounding. Remember all our properties, the multiplication property of zero, anything times zero equals zero. Five times zero, zero. X times zero, zero. Ooga woo times zero, zero. We covered another property, the multiplication property of one. And in English, anything times one equals itself. Five times one, five. X times 1, X. Hootie times 1, Hootie. Okay. We covered the commutative property, the commutative property of multiplication, where you can commute. Things can move, change their order, if you would. 5 times 7, 7 times 5. Okay, they commuted. 2 times 10 times 3, 10 times 2 times 3. The order can change, and everybody is going to, the answer is going to resame this, uh, stay the same. Now, remember, that doesn't work for division or subtraction and other things. It only works for multiplication and addition, okay? We switch the 10 and the 2, and that's okay, as long as you switch one of them. The associative property, where we don't switch the order, we switch who we're associating. 
Now this is only going to come into play when we have more than two uh, factors. For instance, here we have three of them. Two times ten times three will result in the same answer as two times ten times three. Note that the order hasn't changed. Two, ten, three, two, ten, three. But the parentheses have. Okay, so it's when we're changing who we're associating, not the order, it's the associative property. In this case, the 2 times 10 will give me a 20, and the 10 times 3 will give me a 30, and we'll get a 60 in either side. Okay, so that's the associative property. The distributive property, really called the distributive property of multiplication over addition, Jolly good. is the one exception to the order of operations, where you don't have to do what's in parentheses first. In this case, we could distribute the 2 to the 3 and to the 4 and really get the same answer on either side. In this case, we could distribute the 10 to the 5 and to the 6, and if you figured it all out, you would still get the same answer. Who cares? The reason we cared about the distributive property is when we couldn't do... I can do that, but I don't want to. You no, know, you can't. We couldn't do what's in parentheses. You can't tell me what x plus 5 is, but we can distribute the 10 to the x and to the 5. Hey, this is great, man. And we can get a better answer. Okay, so there's your distributive property. Okay, remember multiplication and partial products? We covered that. We're going to take the 2, I'm sorry, we're going to take the 3 in this case and multiply it times the 9, get some answers. 27, put the 7 down, carry the 2. Now 3 times the 8. 24 plus the 2, I'm going to get 26. Now we've only done it partially, we still have to do the 4. 4 times 9, 36, put the 6 in the appropriate place, carry the 3. Now 4 times 8, 32, add the 3 to it. We get our 35. Okay, that's another partial product. We'll add our two partials, lining up nicely. 7 and nothing is 7. 6 and 6 is 12. Carry the 1. Add all three of those, the 5, the 2, and the 1. Get an 8. And 3 and nothing is 3. Okay, partial product multiplication. Remember area is how many squares something is. And we actually had a formula for this. We don't have to count the squares. We multiply length times width, 3 times 5, we can get 15, okay? That's especially useful when I have a whole lot of squares. This only works for a rectangle. Length, in this case, 9 inches times 7 inches. The area of this bad boy, the number of squares, which you wouldn't want to count, is length times width, or in this case, 63 inches squared, or square inches. Remember division vocabulary. We had three things in a division problem. 60 divided by 2 is 30. The thing that's getting divided is the dividend. The thing that's doing the dividing is the divisor, and the answer is the quotient. Divi division can look uh, in, uh, has many uh, faces, if you would. In this case, the 50 is the dividend. The thing that's doing the dividing, the 10, is the divisor. And the answer, the quotient, is 5. Of course, you're all used to this division uh, face, where 42 is the dividend, 7 is the divisor, and 6 is the quotient. Okay? Another thing, very important, doesn't seem it's important, that the reason the definition of division, if you would, the reason that, for instance, um, 24 divided by 6 equals 4 is because, we invert and check with multiplication, is because 4 times 6 equals 24. And apparently, if hootie divided by 3 is 2, then you can be sure, even though you don't know what, what the number is, that 2 times 3 is hootie. Okay? Remember your division properties. Anything divided by 1 is itself. Even if you don't know what it is. Poo poo divided by 1 is poo poo. What else? 
the division properties of zero. Zero divided by anything results in zero. Zero divided by anything, zero divided by two, zero divided by five, results in zero. Zero divided by hoo hoo equals zero. The tough one, the reason we can check that is because, in this case, zero times five is zero, zero times two is zero, and zero times hoo hoo is zero. Remember the second division property of zero. It was a tough one. We needed to know anything divided by zero we really don't have a definition for. Once again, we go back to our definition of division. 24 divided by 6 is 4 because 4 times 6 is 24. We really don't have an answer for 24 divided by 0. Can't be 24 because 24 times 0 doesn't equal 24. No way. Can't be 0 because 0 times 0 doesn't equal 24. No way. So nothing. Uh, times 0 equals 24, anything divided by 0 we're going to have to call undefined. How about long division, where we repeat a sequence hmm. of estimating a quotient, <coughs> multiplying to check, subtracting, and bringing down the next digit, and going back and doing it again, estimating a quotient, Multiplying to check, subtracting, and bringing down the next digit. And going back and doing it again. One application of this that we learned was computing averages. Let's compute, for instance, the average of these grades, 93, 86, 71, and 82. We'll add them up, line up the digits. Let's see, that adds up to 12, so we'll put the 2 there, carry the 1, Add up the tens, we get 332. Now that's, we want to compute an average. We're going to add them up and divide by the number of scores or the number of numbers, if the number of values, we'll say. In this case, 4. 332 divided by 4. Hmm. 4 goes into 3 nunts. Let's go out a little further. 4 goes into 33 hmm, 8 times. 8 times 4, 32. We do our multiplication. Then we do our subtraction. Bring down the next digit and go through the steps again. 4 into 12 goes 3 times. Multiply, subtract, and bring down the next digit. But there isn't a next digit, so that's our answer. That's averages. That's enough for today, I guess, huh? Okay. You need to go out and do your homework, but I want to make sure that don't, don't study your homework, you actually do it, okay? You learn, not inside from into your ears, but up your hands, okay, from the pencil. And if you have any questions, don't be afraid to check out our homepage at www.montgomerycollege.edu up slash pre-algebra or Email me at bwitty at mc.cc.md.us. Till next time, thank you for listening. Thank you very much.